Chapter 2 is about organizing data. In this chapter, we will show how to make visual displays of quantitative information. In Section 2.1, we will focus on four main areas, including frequency distributions, histograms, basic distribution shapes, and graph interpretation. A frequency distribution partitions data into classes or intervals and shows how many data values are in each class. The classes or intervals are constructed so that each data value falls into exactly one class. Frequency distributions can be displayed in two different ways. A frequency table, which is further discussed in this section, and a histogram, which is further discussed in the next PowerPoint. A frequency table displays each data class along with the number or frequency of data in that class. Other items, such as the midpoint of each class, may be included as well. When we have a large set of quantitative data, it's useful to organize it into smaller intervals or classes and count how many data values fall into each class. A frequency table does just that. Here is an example of a frequency table. The variable in this study is the number of cups of coffee people drink each week. The frequency identifies the quantity of people that belong to each class. For example, starting with the first row, two people drink zero to three cups of coffee per week. In the second row, three people drink four to seven cups of coffee per week and so on for the rest of the table. In this example, a task force to encourage carpooling did a study of one-way commuting distances of workers in the downtown Dallas area. A random sample of 60 of these workers was taken. The commuting distances of the workers in the sample are given in the table below. Make a frequency table for these data. Here is the data for a random sample of 60 workers and their one-way commuting distances to downtown Dallas. Step 1 is to determine class size and class width. As for class size, if you use fewer than 5 classes, you risk losing too much information. If you use more than 15 classes, the data may not be sufficiently summarized. Let the spread of the data and the purpose of the frequency table be your guides when selecting the number of classes. For the purpose of this example, we will use six classes. To calculate the class width for the commuting data, we follow the given formula. According to the data on the previous slide, the largest distance commuted is 47 miles, and the smallest is 1 mile. Using six classes and plugging all the information into the formula, we get 7.7. .7. When it comes to class width, we always round up, so the class width is 8. Steps 2 and 3 are to determine the lower and upper class limit. The lower class limit is the lowest data value that can fit in a class. The upper class limit is the highest data value that can fit in a class. The class width is the difference between the lower class limit of one class and the lower class limit of the next class. The smallest commuting distance in our sample is one mile. We use this smallest data value as the lower class limit of the first class. Since the class width is 8, we add 8 to 1 to find that lower class limit for the second class is 9. Following this pattern, we establish all the lower class limits. Then we fill in the upper class limits so that the classes span the entire range of data. Step 4 is to tally the data into classes. How do we tally the data? Telling 
data is a method of counting data values that fall into a particular class or category. To tally data into classes of a frequency table, examine each data value. Determine which class contains the data value and make a tally mark or vertical stroke beside that class. For ease of counting, each fifth tally mark of a class is placed diagonally across the prior four marks. The class frequency for a class is the number of tally marks corresponding to that class. Step 5 is to calculate the midpoint. The center of each class is called the midpoint or class mark. The midpoint is often used as a representative value of the entire class. The midpoint is found by adding the lower and upper class limits of one class and dividing by two. Step six is to calculate class boundaries. There is a space between the upper limit of one class and the lower limit of the next class. The halfway points of these intervals are called class boundaries. How do we find class boundaries? To find upper class boundaries, add 0 0.5 units to the upper class limit. To find lower class boundaries, subtract 0 0.5 units from the lower class limit. Step 7 is to create a frequency table. So we assemble all the information into the frequency table. As a quick recap, in steps 1 through 3, we determine the class size with lower and upper limit. In step 4, we tally the data. In step 5, we calculate the midpoint. In step 6, we calculate class boundaries. And step 7 is placing all the information into the frequency table. Now onto relative frequency, which requires just one additional step. To find the relative frequency of a particular class, divide the class frequency F by the total of all frequencies N, which is also referred to as the sample size. Step 8 is to create a relative frequency table. The sample size is n equals 60. Notice that the sample size is the total of all the frequencies. Therefore, the relative frequency for the first class, the class from 1 to 8, is 14 divided by 60, which is about 0 0.23. The symbol given here means is approximately equal to. We use this symbol because we rounded the relative frequency. Relative frequencies for the other classes are commuted in a similar way. The total of the relative frequencies should be 1. However, rounded results may make the total slightly higher or slightly lower than 1. There are six steps to creating a frequency table. One, determine the number of classes in the corresponding class width. Two, create the distinct classes. We use the convention that the lower class limit of the first class is the smallest data value, and the class width to this number to get the lower class limit of the next class. Fill in upper class limits to create distinct classes that accommodate all possible data values from the data set. Tally the data into classes. Each data value should fall into exactly one class. Total the tallies to obtain each class frequency. Compute the midpoint class mark for each class. Step 6 determine the class boundaries. To make a relative frequency table, we have one additional step. 
So we first make a frequency table. Then for each class, compute the relative frequency, F divided by N, where F is the class frequency and N is the total sample size. As such, F divided by N is simply the proportion.